something that feels like a year ago, we had a Xilance M705 on the table and I loved that goddamn thing. It was affordable as hell and it performed like a Noxia NHU12A on our 135 watts benchmark machine. It was absolutely incredibly good for, for the price. That thing was amazing. But now Xilance tried to step it up even further. Meet the Xilance M906 or XC081. Please, please stop using double naming. It's, it's so confusing. With six instead of five black copper heat pipes, this thing is supposed to be their new flagship CPU cooler. But wait a minute, it has only a single fan, but a much larger heatsink. Does that mix well? But before we create any theories, Let's just get straight to the benchmarks. Allowing the M906 to push its fans to the limit, so no fan, push its fan to the limit on top of our 135 watt CPU benchmark machine showed us that it was capable of cooling the CPU down to 51.9 degrees C above ambient, which is a horrible result. Don't get me wrong, on the big picture, it's not bad. For a single fan, single tower cooler, although it is definitely a thick boy, it is actually the only one landing that high. Going up from the M906, everything is either a dual tower, an AIO, or a single tower but with two fans. And if we go down, the first thing we meet that would count as the same category of coolers would be the Arctic Freezer 34 eSports. So for a single tower, single fan cooler, it's good, it's even the best. But this is supposed to be the new Xilinx flagship air cooler, but it's just not. It's actually 3 degrees behind the M705. Now a few things on this. According to the usual marketing bullshit, Xilinx is stating that their older M705 is supposed to survive up to 220 watts, while the new M906 is supposed to survive 250, which we all know is just not going to happen, or at least not in a way that is going to be uh, yeah, in some way, shape or form enjoyable. I mean, that's 3900k territory, and everybody knows that this thing will probably not survive a 3900k. But that actually said, ignoring the actual number that they are saying, they are definitely saying that one is better than the other one, which is, in this case, just wasn't happening. Numero dos, we are pushing only 135 watts for our CPU cooler benchmark, so it's very much possible that the M705 is just a lot more efficient on lower loads, and that the M906 will take off after 150, 175, or whatever watts. That's a possibility, but for 135 watts, the M705 was yeah, it just flat out won, and the M906 lost. But for single fans, single tower coolers, congrats Xilinx, you have the crown. But what about the noise to performance? Slowly reducing the fan speed in 10% decrements showed that the M906 is not in the very good spot. To my very surprise, comparing it to the older M705 or NHD15 or Nokia NHU12A, it just did not stand a chance. And we even, just for a joke, compared it to the way smaller M704. Well, thanks to the fan being just a bit too loud, no way. The M906 and its, let's be honest, incredibly bad noise to performance ratio lost to basically every Xilinx cooler we had before. And I really did not expect that. In no way did I think that this would actually happen, because objectively looking right now, it does look like a bad cooler for the size. Heatsink wise, we have a 154mm high tower, which is 129mm long and 105mm wide, so it's actually quite big, but not too big. 154 is still acceptable for most mid-sized cases. In the bottom we have a nicely looking nickel plated copper base with six heat pipes traveling up the fins. Though there is one thing that did kind of throw me off and may even result in some lost performance. The top plate, which in my opinion does look, it looks quite nice. I really like the finish. The problem is, it is entirely made out of plastic. And if we compare that to, for example, any Be Quiet cooler, they are making theirs out of aluminum. And it's not that making them out of aluminum will make the cooler perform like a 420 AIO, but making it out of something that can actually transport heat or give off heat 
definitely does a better thing than just straight up isolating plastic. Plus, plastic does feel kind of cheap and I'm just never happy with those things and if you have watched the channel for long enough, you know how I react to plastic. On the fan side, we got another use case of Xylence's XPF 120B PVM 120mm fan spinning at up to 1500 rpm while it's pushing 63.41 CFM at 1.58mm of H2O. It's definitely not the best fan, not by a long shot, but neither was the one used on the M705. But there we had just a combination of things that worked particularly well. And here it's it's good for a single tower, single fan cooler, but compared to the older and smaller one, it's, it's a bit meh. If you get one of those M906s, you will be greeted with the usual silent style box with a bit of imaging and some specs. Inside we'll find the cooler, mounting hardware for AM5 and AM4 for Team Red, as well as every LGA 1150, 1200, 1700, 2066, and 2011 for Intel. And of course, let's not forget the usual tube of thermal paste, fan and the additional fan clips in case you really want to run this thing in dual fan mode. Installing a M906 is nothing complicated. On top of an LGA 1700 socket, we need to take the LGA 1700 backplate, position it behind the motherboard, slap the spacers onto the outsticking rods, position the Intel 1700 brackets with the ends pointing towards the center and then screw the whole thing down. Over on AMD we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets, slap the spacers on there, followed by the AMD brackets in an inwards pointing position and then screw everything down. From there on both platforms, squeeze some of that thermal juice onto the chip and screw that sucker down, one screw on the side and the other one through the heatsink. And of course, don't forget to slap the fan on there. Installation or build quality wise, there is really nothing to nag here. In my opinion, it does not look bad. I like it. The only thing I really do not like is the plastic on top. But I can admit that once it's on there, you will never touch it again. I also like the all black design. And although I really hate the, the top plate, the fact that the top plate is made out of plastic, which really annoys me even more now while I'm sitting here, uh, at least it looks good. The only outstanding optical feature is the Xylence logo on the fan, which thanks to it being made out of like metal and it has like a touchy feeling to it, it, it does... No. It does feel kind of nice and it gives the whole thing like a stealthy look. But in the end, even if I like how it looks, in the end performance is just not where it should be considering that this is supposed to be the new top dog. I am still unsure as to why exactly, maybe it's the fan, maybe it's because it's only one fan, maybe the heatsink is just, just not good enough, I don't know. But before we throw in any more wild theories, another round of bullshit manufacturers are saying, this time you don't know what you are selling. Or a new flagship in the field of air cooling from the Performance X series, the M906. It has six extremely powerful black heat pipes which dissipate 250 watts of waste heat to the countless cooling fins and thus predestine it for potent multi-core processors. Due to the direct contact of the heat pipes, the, the direct contact? Due to the direct contact of the heat pipes, the heat transfer between CPU and cooler is extremely efficient and very even. Direct contact? Heat pipes? Direct? Direct contact between CPU and cooler? No, 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 this is what a direct touch heat pipe looks like. Your M705 cooler is made that way. This is what the M906 is coming with. This is a nickel plated copper base. This is a block of copper on top of pipes, which is then plated with a very thin layer of nickel. This is not the same thing. Now, I'm not trying to suggest that direct touch is so much better than nickel plated. The theory suggests that direct touch will be better because there is you know, less metal to travel through. The problem, however, is, and please note that for example, a NHD15 and U12A are not direct touch. The problem is that everything needs to be manufactured perfectly. Everything needs to be in, in perfect contact, perfect pressure, perfect everything in order for it to function as efficient 
as the theory allows it to. But still, this is definitely a possibility as to why a M906 did not perform as well as a M705. Maybe, just maybe, there is not enough heat being transported to the now a lot bigger heatsink, meaning that we would have a bottleneck at the very base of the cooler. Definitely possible, just kind of hard to prove. So it's really not a bad cooler standing on its own. It's really not. But considering that the M705 exists, you are just not going to sell me something bigger, which is not as well performing. It is louder at a higher price. I mean, 43 euros at the time of recording is really not a lot, but 38 is definitely less. So yeah, sorry, but no. Good cooler on its own, but it's not beating their best. But hey, it's uh, the best single tower, single fan cooler on our max performance list. So uh, they got that going. It's just sad that it's not the case for Noise 2 performance. But okay, this should be it for Xylens and their new M906. At this point, a huge thank you to them for sending it over. On a side note, we also have a Discord server. So if you wanna join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to get a perfectly straight belt sander, because according to a theory I put together like exactly a minute and a half ago, just because it is a nickel plated copper base doesn't mean that it needs to stay that way. And if I grind off enough of it, I will maybe have that direct touch silence is really claiming here. Or I will have a broken cooler, who knows, but it will make for a great video. Anyway, thank you for watching and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Xylance LQ240 Pro AIO. This one was also a quite good surprise. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.